When using scenarios for what-if analysis, I sometimes like to test different hypotheses with my team. I may also want to come back to a previously defined scenario in case some assumptions that I made have changed. In this video, I will show you how to save scenarios. Saving scenarios allows your users to share their what-if analysis with others, as well as come back to a previously defined analysis and change their initial assumptions. This is the second part in the three-part video series covering scenarios in Workshop. You can find the links to the previous video in the description. Before we can start saving scenarios, we'll need to create an object that implements the scenario trait. At minimum, this object needs a property to hold the scenario ID and another for the scenario name. These should also be set to the primary key and title property of the object respectively. The object can contain more than just these two fields, for this example, we will store the date at which the scenario was created, the name of the creator, and a short description of the scenario. In the Properties tab of your Scenario object, select your ID property and the type class Scenarios version Scenario RID. Then select your name or title property and add the type class Scenarios Scenario Name. Your Scenario object is now ready to store safe scenarios. But before you'll be able to save scenarios to this object in Workshop, you'll need to set up an action that creates objects of this type. To create the actions, we can return to the Overview tab and go to Create New. Remember that you need to enable right back on your object type in order to have this button available. We will first set up the Create Scenario action, so adding a new object of this type. We can add all parameters in the action configuration. We need to add the same type class to scenario name and scenario ID parameters. For the name parameter, we can set up this type class in the Details tab. For the ID, we need to create a new parameter first and add the type class, then map this parameter to the corresponding property in the Rules tab of the action. Similarly, we need to create an update scenario action that modifies the scenario object type. In this case, we need to fill in the scenario locator and name type classes. For the action parameter that determines the scenario object to be modified, add the type class scenarios scenario object locator. For the name, we apply the same type class as before, scenarios scenario name. Finally, we can save our ontology modifications and configure the saving workflow in a workshop module. For this, I will build on top of the workshop module that shows passenger information. To start, we need to add a new button to our button group and set it up as a scenario action, Save Scenario. We now must select the scenario to save, the object type that implements the scenario trait, and the two actions that we've just created, Create and Update. If the type class for the action parameters are configured properly, then the scenario ID and name parameters should be automatically filled in. Other action parameters can be configured the same way as other actions in Workshop, so you can set default values or leave them blank for the users to fill in. As a user, you can now save newly created scenarios as well as update previously created ones. Once you save a newly created scenario, an action pop-up will show up. The scenario name and ID will automatically be filled in and the user will have the opportunity to fill in the rest of the information needed. After clicking Submit, the scenario will be saved and the new indicator will be removed to indicate success. At this point, the scenario has been saved, but it will not be loaded by default when visiting this application unless configured to do so. In the next video, Load and Apply Scenarios, I will explain how to load the saved scenarios so that other users can see these saved what-if explorations as well.